can I see the men? Just the men. Can I see the women? How many of us are Christians? How many of us are Muslims? How many of us are atheists? That is, you don't believe in anything. You believe in yourself. How many of us uh, believe in African traditional religion? Okay. So I just wanted to know my audience so that I will know exactly where <laughs> I come in. Thank you to the SHE Conference for inviting me. <laughs> I am here to talk about money, mind, sex in a healthy relationship. I heard my two colleagues speak from the technical perspective, but I want to speak from the spiritual perspective. That is why I asked you the question. Because it is ignorance that makes us perish. If you are a person and you don't know from whence even your thinking originates, you won't understand yourself. How many of us understand ourselves and everything we do? We understand why we do the things we do and why we are who we are. And we are excited about ourselves because we know why we are doing it and everything we do is intentional. No? How many of us do things and wonder, oh God, why did I do this? Me, cra, why did I even say this? Why did I even gossip? This conversation, cra, that I had, what was the essence of it? Ah, I wish I could take my words back. How many of us? So, if you believe with me that there is more to you than you know, that there is more that happens to you than you are in control of. Let me see by your hand. If you believe that there is more to you than you understand, there is more to you that you are in control of or you are not in control of. Let me see by your hand. Okay. So I will start by explaining the variables in my topic, the main words, the major words in my topic. Before then, I'll introduce this. Relationships are established by God, except the atheist, and I didn't see anybody who said he was an atheist. All the rela uh, religions, you are an atheist, you don't believe there's God. You believe there's God. What? You don't believe anything. Okay, so he's an outlier. <laughs> eh, all the three religions believe there is a God. That's why I asked the questions that I asked. We all believe there is God. And if we believe there is God, we also all believe that God created the earth. The African traditional religion people believe, the Muslims believe, and I as a Christian, I believe there is a God. That is the basis for our religion. Please go back to the introduction. So I am starting my message from the fact that it is God who originated relationships. God started relationships. It is God in Genesis who found for Christians, I don't know where it is in uh, the Quran, but if you read it, it is somewhere there. Go and check. It is God who said it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. And he brought the woman in the verse 22. He says, and the Lord God brought her to him. It is not Adam who asked for the woman. It is not Adam who went for the woman. It is not Adam. Adam did nothing about Eve. He was just there. And God brought her to him. And when God brought her to him, listen to what happened. God presented her to him and he exclaimed, Ah, this is bone of my bone. And I will call her woman. This is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. 
I will call her woman. So anytime you call a girl a woman, your woman, you are married. Are you listening to me? Anytime everybody knows this is his woman, you accept this is my woman, you are married. That is why there is nothing like my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my this, my that. You are married. When you listen to the conversation of Jesus with a woman at the well, those who don't know the Bible, there is a story about Jesus meeting someone at the well and telling the person that, go and bring your husband. And the woman said, I don't have a husband. Then he said, you speak truth because you've had five. And the one that you are with now is not even your husband. In other words, it's someone's husband or Tarahu. <laughs> the society and everybody does not know that and he has not accepted that she is his woman. So he says you speak truth, but you've had five husbands. You see, the reason why it is not people she has married and divorced is that he, she said, come and see who has told me everything about my secrets. If you marry somebody publicly, it's not your secret. But if you sleep with people behind doors, closed doors, it's your secret. So Jesus virtually told her, all the people she's been sleeping with, you are married. So relationships, some of us think that it is only when you go, you see, we have disgraced the altar. Where you go and do the amaria and go and put the veil and go and do the uh, uh, holy matrimony and go and remove the veil. You've seen everything behind the veil. Master, remove that thing. And now you are now coming to do styles. And you are now coming to do, fold the bed, come on, stand back, fold the bed. No, 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 no. You've seen it. Just say, so for one poi. You've seen it already. You are married. You are married. And a lot of us are already married. So we don't have husbands, but we are married. And that is why sometimes you can't even find one. Because you belong to somebody. And if that person, depending on the spirit that lives in that person, it will be difficult for you to find some other person. Because in the spiritual realm, that person is your husband. That person is your husband. And God instituted this relationship for a particular purpose. And it is something that everybody must understand. If you don't understand, you miss the goal. And that is why LGBTQV are, cannot stand in the spiritual sense of it. He says that I will make him a helper suitable for him. I will make him a companion commensurate to him. In that sentence, there are three hymns. So without him, there wouldn't have been any hair. Hair was created only in reference to him. To do what? To be his helper. So for those of us here who are married, if you are a woman and you are playing the superintendent's role in your house, you are playing the headmistress role in your house, you are playing the chief disciplinarian role, you are playing the investigative role in your house, that's not your work. That's why you are tired. On your way, Juma. Why now, friend? Why now, Nene Kasaye? I always tell people that me, my husband, he puts his phone down. 30 minutes, he has 200 missed calls. So, me, standing here, I want to know who every one of them is. Hey, Namum Badama. The text messages, the emails, you want to go and find out, the Facebook. Sister, it's not your job. You are there to help the man. If he had gotten it all together, you, he wouldn't need you. He needs you because he doesn't have it together. So you come across with compassion and not judgment. Because immediately judgment enters into the room, love flees from the room. Because you preside, you can't preside over something you love. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. So the purpose of a relationship was for companionship and for help. Are you with me? And it doesn't mean that you are an inferior person as a woman. As I am sitting here, if I don't understand how my digestive system is working, like I don't understand, and I was asking my brother Opoku Ajiman here, 
Will I go and ask someone who is less knowledgeable than me? If I need help, will I go for someone who is inferior to me? No. So if God is creating help for his son, will he create someone who is worse off than his son? How can you help someone that is better than you? Over to you, ladies. So if you make yourself a slave queen, who is just there for a man to come and help, you have reduced your divine purpose here on earth. You have reduced it. Because you have to be so capable that you'll be able to help a man. If you are financially, emotionally, psychologically, everything dependent on a man, you have failed as a woman. In research, we have dependent and independent variables. The man is a dependent variable. The woman is an independent variable. We explain the man. That is why the uh, uh, knowledge will say that, show me your wife. Eh? You are a projection. Who you are tells, your wife explains you. The, your wife. So, uh, the gentlemen, when they are going to look for a woman, wash your one was a fat. You can't go beyond your reach. Neither do you want to go beyond your reach, do you, uh, below your reach. Do you understand? Let's move on. And this is only a preamble. I want us to understand something. I'm building something and I want to build it on a foundation. And the foundation I am building it on is God created a woman. And he created a woman to be man's helper. So if a man, you go for a man as a husband, he is as confused as you. He is as helpless as you. So you will not get any help from him. As simple as that. Which man is coming to wash your boxes and clean your home and take care of your children? Whilst you, you are being a man. All of you have been created in the image of God to project a certain image. And it is internal. That's why you can't go and marry a man. And if you are a woman, and you go and marry a woman, you are being wasteful because there are people there who need your help. You are giving it to someone who doesn't need your help. This is me, my simple conceptualization of this whole gay thing. It is just to disrupt the structure of how God has planned the society. Now, my brother Opokwajman has spoken to us about how our mind works. I want to go beyond what he said. If we all belong to these three religions and the outlier, we all know that, but even that, he will agree with me. Because he will know that every man is made of three parts. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. Who doesn't agree with me? Your spirit, your body, your soul, and your body. Now let me explain your spirit. Everybody is born with a spirit. The, the, the traditionalists, they will say, Eja yesunsum. In other words, you get your spirit from your father. Your father gives you your spirit. Have you asked why it is so? The egg is stationary, but the sperm already has life. It's a swimming, it is walking, the egg is stationary. So the father's spirit lives in you. It is a carnal human spirit. It is weak and it is sinful. Our default drive as human beings is to be sinful. That is why, what's it? Nobody teaches a child God. In other words, children grow up. You put a child uh, uh, in an environment where there's no religion. The child knows good and evil. How did the child get to know good and evil? Because there's a spirit that lives in man. Then there is the Holy Spirit and the evil spirit. And that is what in Christianity we call spiritual warfare, eh? Every time anybody is born into this world, there is a warfare over your spirit. The evil spirit and the Holy Spirit, which will take over your spirit. Are you listening to me? Sun Sun Fi. It is in our traditions. Sun Sun Fi. Sun Sun. Oh, is it? No, Sun Sun. Yeah, Kong Kong. There. Sun Sun Kong Kong. It is in our tradition. It is in Muslim tradition. It is in Christian tradition. Holy Spirit. Now, these spirits are what instructs the soul. The soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. In other words, your consciousness. What makes you you? Your will, your mind, your emotions. I like, I don't like. So you will say that he is a... What do you like? 
What you like depends on what lives in you. So the Bible says that you are either a slave unto righteousness or a slave unto sin. Are you listening to me? And it is dependent on the spirit that lives in you that is instructing your soul. So if you are just there, and in this world, you can hardly find a demilitarized zone. As for you are just there. If you are just there, human spirit, you are stealing, you are doing this, you are smoking, you are doing this. Then the evil spirit takes over. Now you move from becoming a thief to an armed robber, killing people, doing this. Oh, as for me, I am carnal, I am sinful, I have a boyfriend, I'm sleeping with someone. Then the evil spirit enters, then you become a prostitute. You are sleeping with everybody. Because sometimes people who do that, they can't even explain to themselves why they are like that. Most people will be like that and in the privacy of their room cry. Why am I like that? Why couldn't I say no to this woman? Why didn't I say I... So how, me, how many people have I slept with? You are in the room, you've sple- slept with 100 people and you think it is you? God didn't create you like that. Because women will tell that doing that is even physically hurtful, right? So why do you do it anyway? So you find people who indulge themselves. I, I don't want to be preaching because I have found out the mix in the room. So you find people who are exhibiting certain... You see, someone gets into the room and the person knows where everything is and the person is stealing. And they say it is a mind thing. Klepto. Kleptomania. It is a mind thing. The the question I am asking is, which spirit is instructing that mind? Are you getting me? There is an evil spirit telling her... If you don't believe there is a spirit that lives in man and that shows you, how do people even prophesy? How do the, 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 the um, fetish priests know what you are coming to say even before you say it? So the person gets here and can steal everything. So soon fear will run. And it's making that original edge to steal become something else, taking her to another level of evil. When you allow the Holy Spirit to live in you, in Acts chapter 9, so, uh, uh, Peter asks, when you believed, did you receive the Spirit? It's important. And a lot of Christians are toothless, powerful Christians because they don't have the Spirit of Christ living in them. They don't have the Holy Spirit living in them. The human spirit is still ruling, but by their thinking, they think that they have believed something. They have not, because it's not supposed to be by might nor by power, but by the Spirit. Are you listening to me? So you ask yourself, the things that I do, mepe, and it's not the things you do for people to clap for you. It is the things you want to do in your privacy. That is what I'm talking about. Someone was talking about cleaning the environment and was passionate about it. He, she, that person doesn't want the environment to be cleaned. Haven't you seen people like that? Like, so there is, there is a, a, some kind of spirit that is informing the behavior of that person. Now the body. The body is only an outlet that we express the instructions that we have gotten, our soul has gotten from the soul, uh, from the spirit. The body is only an object through which we express the instructions that the soul has gotten from the spirit. So if you have the Holy Spirit living in you, you like to do righteous things. And those righteous things are uh, uh, portrayed by your body. eh? You like to speak righteousness. You like to see righteous things. You like to walk to righteous places. Your hand likes to do righteous things because you are now a slave unto righteousness because the Holy Spirit has been superimposed onto your spiritual nature. Please stay with me. As an American, you may not hear it again ever in your life. You may not even understand it as I am speaking. But whatever God you believe in, Tell that God to help you understand this. Because it is by understanding this that you will understand yourself. And the impulsive things you do, that is even against what you think you should have done. So the question now is, who are you? What spirit lives in you? How do you think? You know, I can give you something to 
process right now. And you'll be amazed about the answers, the varied answers that you, I will get. And the answers that I will get is based on how everybody is processing it. Some people, when you go to the psychologist, eh, they will tell you to, they'll say, for example, form words with C. Then when you say C, eh, 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 the, the psychopath will say carnage. The person who has a good heart will say care. Can we do, do that here? Because I have made you aware. You, 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 uh, you, will, you, will, you will be conscious of it. But the things that pop up, and uh, you go to Facebook and they'll tell you the words you see first, the word you register first, you write, that tells you what kind of instruction your mind is getting and how you process things. And it depends on the spirit that lives in you. Question yourself, what spirit lives in me and is instructing your soul? Now, if this is the important place of the mind, a place where spirits lead you, eh? the Bible will tell us that he guides our steps. So if you are a Christian and you have the spirit of God living in you and he guides your steps, he doesn't come physically through your mind, instructing your mind, guiding your steps, what you should do, what you should not do. Is that something you should take lightly? Do you have to play with your mind? Is your mind something you should play with? That's why you should be careful the things you feed your mind with. When you go on the internet, be careful the things you feed your mind with. It's not something you have to play with lightly. Please, can we move on? So on that premise, let me talk about money. Money. You see that quotation from Ecclesiastes. A feast is made for laughter and wine makes merry, but money answers all things. Money is good. It is a medium of, of exchange. The more you have, the more you can exchange with, right? So it is not about, when it comes to a good, healthy relationship, it is not about the presence or absence of money. It is about the equitable acquisition and distribution of money. When it comes to a healthy relationship, I will repeat that. It is not about the presence or absence of money. It is about the equitable acquisition and distribution of the money. Let me break this down. Both of our speakers have told us that rich people suffer and poor people suffer. Mental stress and everything. So when you come into a relationship, sometimes it is more painful for the wife of the rich man than for the wife of the poor man to accept certain things. Because if I know my husband can buy me a brand new Nissan Patrol and he decides he won't buy it, I should take Trotro. And I have a story like that. The man had about three Nizam patrols packed in her house, but the wife had to pick taxi to take her child to school every day. If you see her driving any of the cars of the husband, it means the guy had traveled. That woman is suffering more mental stress than the wife of the poor man who doesn't have a car and she has to take taxi. In fact, she's even content that, that, that the husband will give her money to take taxi. Otherwise, if the money is not there, she has to walk and she's content. Why? Because she knows her husband doesn't have. And again, her husband doesn't have, not because her husband is not working, but because he's working hard. But it's just that what he can get is so little. And he sees, she sees him breaking his back for the family. So she's content with whatever little she gives, he gives her. As opposed to someone who has plenty and will not give you. So money can be in the house. And it is also against someone who is lying there will not work and will make you suffer. That also will bring problem. That is why I said equitable acquisition. I am going, you are also going. I am digging the, 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 the gutters, you are also going to sell the cassava. We are all struggling to bring money home. And if you ask our traditional people, you see in the olden days... A lot of women's uh, wives' stuff got thrown out of their husbands' houses. Because when people think that you are not being equitable in financial things in the home, they think they have superior power over you. Like my brother also said, 
that uh, he thinks he's bringing the money. So he will tell you he wants fufu at 5 a.m. He's paying the money and all of that. That is also a problem, isn't it? So if I am going, and if he's also lying there, he's not working, he gets up and you put the food down and he's, he's also chopping for free. You will also get angry because the acquisition of the money is not equitable. So now it is men's stuff that are being thrown out of women's houses. Eh? Go and watch the internet. Anybody who feels cheated thinks they have the upper hand and they will maltreat you. So money is not the issue. Ask yourself, are we equitably acquiring it? And are we equitably distributing it? When we get it, you give it to your family and your friends. You don't give me. And you don't allow me to also give some, give some to my, man, uh, my, my family and my friends. It is not fair. So fairness is what determines the role of money in a healthy relationship. The fairness in its acquisition and the fairness in its distribution. That is how I have positioned money in this my discussion. Now let's go to sex. And here I want to talk about two forms. There's consensual sex and there's non-consensual sex. In other words, people have sex, yes. One way is it's consensual. I, I hope you agree, period. Another one is, I will even ask you, by force, against your will. You have also have, had sex, but I am not talking about the non-consensual one. And I didn't use rape, because there can also be um, perm permissible rape, like, not permissible rape, but you allow someone to rape you because of your position, your hopeless position. So even though he's raping you, you have kind of agreed for him to rape you. In your heart of hearts, you are not really involved with that person in the sexual act. In fact, you are psyching yourself, but you feel like, oh, he's my professor. Oh, I want the job. Oh, this, oh, that. So you are forcing yourself to be raped. I am his wife. So even if I don't agree to him doing this to me, it's my role, it's my responsibility, so let me allow him. Now, you can also talk about the participants. And I am talking about, here I am talking about consensual sex. I'm not going into rape in this, my disposition. Now, again, participants, man, woman, same sex, man, man, girl, girl, or woman, woman, and also human beings and beasts. That is what is happening. Because if human beings are now having sexual relationships with animals, and please don't think it's far-fetched from Ghana. I listened to some radio program and people were saying things. And I'm like, is this in Ghana? People are doing things. So the question then is, which one am I talking about? Please, I'm talking about man and woman. <laughs> I'm limiting myself as to what it is that I am going to talk about. Now, when we talk about sex, your sexual orientation is dependent on your mindset, which includes your self-perception. Your sexual orientation. As for me, I'm a sexual person. Uh, we, just, we just celebrated Ebony. She branded herself the bad girl. She's sexual. I like it. I like to have sex. I like to touch people. She says she's a sexual person. Self-orientation. As for me, I don't really care. We saw those... Uh, 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 please, permit me if I am a bit... I use words that are not too... I don't know how to talk about sex without mentioning sex. Neither do I know. I, uh, yeah, so uh, pardon me. It's just that the job I have to do requires that. We just saw some secondary school. I don't know how many of us saw that in Facebook. Some secondary school girls put a camera in front of them, a phone camera. Self-perception. So far as that person is concerned, what is it? It's nothing. So, so, so total disregard for the body. You don't care. So the people you have sex with, 
why you have sex, whom you have sex, when you have sex, and where you have sex. It depends on your mindset and your self-perception. Some people, they can have sex in the bush. They can have it in somebody's car. They can just go to somebody's uh, office. Baby, 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 baby. Self-perception. Self-perception. How do you respect yourself? Where have you placed yourself and the members of your body as a person? That is what determines. So it's not really about you had sex. The most important part of this for your mind is who you are having it with. That is what you, how your mind will process it. Who you are having it with. Why you are having it with the person. Where you are having it with. And when. Is it time for me to do this? Whether you like it or not, you go through that mental process every time you want to have sex. Who am I having it with? Where am I having it? Why am I having it? When should I have it? Is it the right time? Is it not the right time? You go through that process. So you engage your mind in that process. And if sex plays so much importance on your mind, why will you treat it as a trivial thing? Unless... You understand? Unless you, you have killed your consciousness, your conscience, there's nothing there. So you are just an empty vessel, being like a, a, a puppet that a certain spirit is just using. You don't have any control whatsoever. Now let's move on. Everybody in this world has a motivation why they have sex. Uh, this is sensitive. I would have asked people one by one. The last sex you had, why did you have it? Uh, but I won't get responses. They will laugh as if they haven't done it before. Should we try? Okay, so manager. Uh, you are married, so I can safely... Consuela, forgive me. The last sex you had, why did you have it? <laughs> Don't tell me who you had it with. This <laughs> <point. laughs> but you said we will laugh, so I'm laughing. <laughs> okay. So, I have tried to write down all the reasons that could come to my mind why people would have sex. If I have omitted something, please... In the contributions part, help me update my notes. And the first one is uh, transactional. Eh? For money. Uh, as for me, that's what I do. I want to have sex for money. So he, even if you are his, her husband and you don't give her money before or after sex, it won't happen. And there are some wives like that. I can see you shaking your... Eh? Because it's transactional. There is nothing about you that fancies the woman. She's married with you. So her compensation is the money you give her. And sign a check on C. Then there is also love. Okay, so you can do it for school fees, car, houses, promise of marriage, and all of that. Transactional. Give me, I give you. Give me, I give you. Simple. Now there's also love and intimacy. I love you. You are mine. I want to be close with you. I want to bond with you. I, I, I want to be part of you. That is also another reason for someone having sex. Then there is lust. Todo release. Nothing more, nothing less. And this is more with men than women. Some women are also like that. And, and, and so, it has no reason. You know, the senseless one. Lust, lubido. Some chemicals are hitting things in their brains and their bodies and the person is just having fun. And that time, the person is not really thinking, who am I having it where, whatever. Your emotions doesn't matter to the person. How you feel about what he's doing to you doesn't matter to you. And most of this happens even in non-consensual sex more, most often because he doesn't care about your feelings and what he's doing with you or what she's doing with you. Some women are like that. Some men are like that. Then there's also hopelessness or lack of choice. This is the person who takes care of me. He pays my school fees. He does that. What should I do? I live in his house. 
I've lost my mother. I've lost my father. I live in his house. If I say no and he puts me out, what will I do? This is the man and the woman I have married. If, if I don't have sex and he, he divorces me, what will I do? I don't like it, but what will I do? Hopelessness, lack of choice. It's also another reason. Then there is also gratitude. I owe this person. I have to pay that person in one way or the other. So I am paying that person with sex. You don't really like it. You don't really want to, but you feel like you owe that person something and you have to pay that person. Now there's sense of duty. It is my job. It is my job. And most of that happens in marriages. A lot of people, a lot of marriages, there is only sex as part of your job. And it happens with the men a lot, especially when they are cheating. They have side chicks around who satisfy what they want, but in their minds, they have to service their wives. <laughs> and I will tell you why that is dangerous. I'm coming. You wait for me. <laughs> so, you see, <laughs> a sense of duty. Oh, I'm just going to service the person. So you don't care. What you do, how you do it, you've done your job. She can't go and stand anywhere and say that I didn't do that. He can't go and stand anywhere. And don't, you see, the men nowadays think that they are the only smart ones. Now the ladies that are coming, me, I'm even afraid. In fact, when you go, they don't even want you to come because they will stay longer. So when she comes, she's only coming to service you so that no, you can't go and stand anywhere and say that even my wife, she doesn't allow me. She will allow you. Are you listening to me, the men? Those days when you had the upper hand, now the women who have come, they don't have the training that some of us had. They don't have the self-control, or let me say they are more emancipated. It's a nicer way to say. They are more emancipated. They have more self-awareness, and they don't care. They don't care because they are emancipated financially and everything. It is not your house. They know how to rent their houses. In fact, they will take the house from you. Now there is also to broker peace, diplomacy. Then you choose sex as the appeasing strategy. As for this one, dear, I have used all the money in the house for betting. Soccer bets. Now I don't have money, but I have to eat. So what do I do? You use sex to broker peace, diplomacy. Then there is also to comfort. We see that in the Bible sometimes. And Isaac, when the mother died, then someone comforted him. You see, so you sometimes, something happens to you. Then sex becomes a comforting tool. Your mother died. You want to go to your girlfriend's house, your boyfriend's house. And part of the comforting involves sex. Now there is also to facilitate forgiveness and to cover iniquity. I watched a certain movie. And the man said he intentionally, his wife has no idea that she's been, he's been cheating on her. Because he intentionally made love with her as if she's the only woman on earth. You understand? Are you strategic? Whilst he's spending all the money or making some serious errors, or whilst she's spending all the money or making some, how many of that? How many times do you realize that women will want to take the car or take some money or buy some expensive thing and they will use sex to facilitate forgiveness? They've spent your money, you've given them the card, the ATM card. They've spent it. And before they tell you the money is finished, they will appease you. Then they will tell, oh, there's a kind of so awesome. Why the why There's nothing you can say. There's nothing you can say. So for forgiveness, please, I hope there is no one here who is below 18. Okay. The young ones who are sitting there, they know more than those of us here. You see them, those people who know and their face is straight. <laughs> in their minds, they are like, ah, this woman, pa, why is she saying all those things? Okay. So my question is, 
I'm talking about the mind, sex, and a healthy relationship. What is your motivation for having sex? I won't ask you to give me the answer. For all of, those, all of us here, those of us here who are sexually active, ask yourself, the last sex that I had, what was my motivation? Why did I do it? Why did I choose the one I did it with? Why did I choose when I did it? Ask yourself, because until you understand these things, everything becomes just perfunctionary. Things that you just do without any thought, without any control. Or is it that the end justifies the means? I want something. I, 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 I can only give what I have. If that is your thought, ask yourself, what spirit is instructing my soul? Because if you have a Holy Spirit that is instructing your soul, that won't be your position. That will not be your position. Now, let me move. How does this affect your mind? We've said so many things. There are two main chemicals in the mind, or hormones, or there are chemicals in the mind that I want to talk about. Oxytocin and dopamine. I'll tell you how they work. Oxytocin has been nicknamed the love hormone or chemical. <laughs> you see, it is a chemical messenger in the brain that plays an important role in the sexual attraction and arousal, in romantic attachment and bonding, even the bonding between mother and child. You see? So when you have a partner... When you, you have sex with that person, oxytocin is there. It is bonding the two of you. So it is not only a physical act. It is also a psychological act. Your mind is picking up signals. And when oxytocin is released by the brain, a bonding process takes place. So why is it that you will go and tell the person Pacho and you will come and cry for two months? <laughs> because you have been bonded. Why is it that you are you? I am me. Me wari ubium. Wose wabodam. Say say say. You are you. I am me. I say I can't marry you again. I say me, I can't have relationship with you again. Go away. Then you say you have mental issues. You are depressed. Why? Have we asked ourselves that question? Because there is a chemical that is released every time you have romantic arousals and interaction with people that bonds you with that person emotionally and psychologically. And that's what you feel in your heart. So it is not something, it is, it, you, I, I will come, I'm building my case. And, and I stand for any interruptions from my brother if he has one. Then there is the second, listen to me carefully, there is the second chemical, dopamine. And dopamine is responsible for addiction. And it is in the reward system of the brain. When you do something that is pleasurable, the brain rewards you. Like you go and exercise. The brain will reward you. And when it rewards you, it releases dopamine. And it is dopamine that addicts you to that thing because it makes you recognize the things that you do that gives you pleasure and make you happy. Do you understand what I'm saying? And sex releases dopamine. That is why we have sex addiction. Just as you have a, a re addiction, cocaine addiction, you can get addicted to a person. In t the boy has beaten you blue and green. Your father says, I do what's not fear. You are addicted. You are addicted. And sex is the same. Remember what I said. Things that give you pleasure. So it is not any useless sex that gets you addicted. It is the pleasurable. So 
So one, you are bonded to this person by your mind. Two, you are addicted to this person by your mind. It's not easy to draw away from this person. So what is the role and the meaning of all of this in a healthy relationship? You see, whatever the Quran is telling us, whatever the Bible is telling us, whatever our elders are telling us, we should listen. Whether you are a traditional religion, whatever it is, they always tell you, marry before you have sex. In fact, they have even pushed it beyond that to even marry girls off at 13 so that the person they marry them to will be the first person they will have sexual interaction. They don't want you to grow too much for your breast to become too big for someone to deceive you. That was the essence of it. But now even nine, they already used. And they will say catch them young and they'll be yours forever. Because when you catch them young, then it means you are the first person to bond them and to be, for them to be bonded to and be addicted to. So they are yours for you. Now eight, cry. if you are not lucky, someone has already started. So what does that mean? When you fornicate before marriage, why should you wait? Eh, it's, a, it's a physiological need. Eh, students will tell you sex is a physiological need. Biologically, you need... So why should you wait? You see, when you have sex with people, pleasurable sex with people, and you enjoy them, and they are bonded, eh, the, the elderly people, the, the African religion people, and the, the, I, I talk about culture. They will say, Jane, see, I don't know what you Eh? Old firewood. It's not easy to light it. Because the bonding is already there. The mind does not forget. You cannot, unless you have amnesia. The bonding is already there. The addiction is already there. So you know what? You have had sex with us. You love that sex. You, have had, you know the sizes and the shapes and the, the, the movements you like. Now, all of them leave you or you leave them by some strange design and you go and find this good man. This good man doesn't measure up to that pleasure. The, the, there's, the man doesn't have a chance from Adam. Only chance. Ah, I wouldn't. Do you know why? Because he can never pleasure you. It's just like someone who is addicted to weed and you are giving the person cigarettes to smoke. Those people, it, it's like someone who is a drunkard, a pure fita, 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 and you are giving the person shandy. What will shandy do to the person? So a lot of people are not happy in their marriages. They are never satisfied by their husbands. Oh no, two or by yes, thousand now where we are seeing for 10 hours. The reason is that where they have gotten to, a bad break. And you see, now the uselessness that has entered our world is sex toys. Eh? So the women, they will be married, then they will go and buy, I've told you, pardon me, sebe, penis. Penis, no show, no, 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 ordinary ones, no, 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 no man has a chance with you. It doesn't matter because unless they learn to vibrate, or they, they mutate. <laughs> they mutate to the vibration level. Are, are, you, are you people listening to me? There is logic to everything that we can't explain that we think it is spiritual. When the Bible says it, there is a reason. Because you are bonded, you are addicted to something. And if you don't get that thing, so you see men going out for side checks because there, the motivation for the sex is different. The motivation for the sex is probably money, house, car. He's giving you the money, house, car. He doesn't care how you feel. So he will tell you to swallow his own manhood. He will tell you to use you in your inners. He doesn't care about how you feel. Because so far as he's concerned, he has compensated you. That kind of demands he can't go and make of his wife. Because he respects his wife. The young girls here, are you listening? He will bring all of his nonsense desires to you. 
And the reason is that he has already compensated you with the house. He has already compensated you with the car. And he doesn't care. In the same way, the women who also go for men and pay them, they can also make all sorts of requests, right? You have already been compensated. So when you are told to take it easy, it is for the health of your relationship. In another vein, it is important for spouses to intentionally pleasure their spouses. It is for your own good. Because if you don't, the married people here, let me see you wave your hand. Because if you don't do it and you think that, oh, he's already my husband, as for this one, I'll lie down like a carcass. Cadaver. As for this one, dear, oh, it's just my duty. She will never be bonded to you. She will never be addicted to you. And if you are not careful, you are not careful. And she goes out there. And she finds something. Yeah, It is important. Now, when we talk about love, so far as I am concerned, please, can we, uh, the person uh, doing the slides, uh, okay, this is the last one. When we talk about love, Love should be the only reason why anybody would want to have sex. Every other thing. You see, I already said what motivates you. So ask yourself, why, what motivates you to have sexual relationship with your partners? What motivates you? It is important. If it is love, I like the definition in 1 Corinthians 13. It says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. You won't lord it over the person. You won't. You are not puffed up. Sometimes we think it's the only. It's only men who lord it over women, but some women also lord it over the men. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. May we be transformed by the renewal of our minds. Amen. Please continue as she takes her seats. Thank you very much, madam. I believe with this, we will have a lot of questions to ask. Okay, so if you have any question, if you have any question, you put up your hand. Then the microphone will be brought to you. Any question? Hey, Mumbi Sao. And some sister Mutsi, Mumanam Rao, yes, Ramo. Okay. Hello. Yes. Thank you for the presentation. I have a question on um, side chicks. So, um, we see married men, or I don't know how it's referred to when it's a woman rather having um, someone. <laughs> Side guys. Side guys. Okay. All right. I usually hear people say, being a side chick or a side guy comes with curses, especially when you are sleeping with someone who is married. Um, could you throw more light on why they say it's a curse? Is it because um, it's a union they are distracting just that? Or because of the motive why they are with you know, the married person? Check social media. All the side chicks who have come public, do you think they are seeing their behavior on social media? How many of us think they are correct? Most 
most of the time you say, girl, we're doing your correct. It has a way, I am telling you about the chemicals that are released in your brain when you have sex with people. And when you keep having sex with people who will never be yours. There is always bonding attachment remover. How many of us are mothers? When your child is away from you, do you feel it in your heart? Do you see that kind of thing? Do you know why when a child dies and the mother or the father is alive, it's, it's, it's a pain that no one wants to go through? Because there's this bonding, and that bonding is the same as the bonding you have with people you are having sex with. So these people will never be yours. So they come, they go. They come, they go. You will never be the same, irrespective. They told you that money doesn't bring happiness. Irrespective of how much you have acquired, you will never be happy. You will never be sane. Because the chemical reaction that is going on in your head, you won't be correct. Uh, the, the other one who threw, uh, threw a tantrum on social media some time ago, what's her name? Tracy Boache. Is this the behavior of a sane person? She needs help. That was what I was thinking, that this person needs a psychologist. She needs help. Do you know that ignorance, they say, is bliss? Most of the time, the wives do not know the existence of these women because the men try to hide it. But do you know that all of these women know the wives and know they exist? And most of the time, they know the wives are better than them. You think they are fools? So that is the case. The case is that you will never have your peace mentally. You will never be right up there. You will never be correct. And it is not spiritual. It is just how we are wired. Some animals only mate with one, one of their kind all their lives. Tortoises and all. No matter what, they will always find that one. Say again. And the doves, they always find that one. It is a chemical reaction in their brain. They will always find that one. And God gave human beings that thing. So that we will be monogamous. Do you understand? No matter how much you love somebody's child, you will never be able to love that person as much as the person you breastfed. Because when you breastfeed, dopamine is released, oxytocin is released, and there's a bonding between you and the child. So if you go and adopt, you can be as kind as whatever. It will never be the same as Abofraba, you have breastfed yourself. Do you, do you get what I, I mean? So if you want to be side chick, go ahead. But you realize that you get the car and it won't fill that void. You get the house, it won't fill that void. You will think taking videos and pictures and putting them on social media will do it. But it will always make you more crazy because other people's comments too are there waiting for you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um... I personally say one brofuna work and I'm not familiar with it. Into Merkama Maminaka say Ozukan was a side chick. Or yeah then obey a side. Personally moon that what them wet side chicken. I say you're Christian. Into a woo Christian woo sum a sum and walk at your dog. Bing in a cur basia cur. And so when I will wear Miss Yafu. Ebasa and then on one on what um right near them be a wow Christian sumum what um bra one tom bra so one tom braza and at the wet side chicken when you feel because sis yaren a main for now yeah you may for the done normally yes sir no 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 one's through and you bring some near can yes sir Ibinu ma den Roman fathers. Ibinu ma den a gay. Ibinu musa abu ba ba dem. Into one ma checks na yo mo. Into mum for one kuti. Nang kafun wanya den. I can tell you that. Eh, he some into ena some of Miss Afuno attend into lesbians. Into some wa kada side chick. The middle of the night bibiri yam. Why side chick? Okay, yet ane yet side chick. On only feelings. Oh no 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 yeah no, sex or so whatever you are on ya. Yeah. Uh, uh, with all due respect, 
because of what we are talking about, please, anybody here who can't understand Fanti, I should have asked that. I want to speak to him in the language that he prefers. Share. As the queen said, you're from one side checking your day. Or you're busy. In you, when you're not finding sure, you don't be busy any. So, is she Bible more? When I'm young, I'm not putting one zip to mark a sack a simple. Wow, 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 P. Now, as some American your day. In your benina, it was a door. Is it a busy? It could be busy. I'm not non crawfo. Na iji besia no ni zini ba ufiye. When you go into Muslim worship, they will tell you, discuss with their wives that are already there. That you want another wife. Go for that person. Bring that person to your home and make a decent woman out of that person. As the kuntra wa friend cheating on in your day, matrimony awa no. Or your legal marriage. Or your legal marriage. Equane ka sign or quota. Or say, I mean, may Jimono Gamizi. May Yerokur, Mukunokur. Eshava Usana Wakanai. You only forsaking all others. You only. On it's our friend cheating. In to say, I will equate Jinan Croft when you may a damn of Ausen. Now I will fetch you if you'll damn me, Jim. Minyi minyansa, minyi mwaro kodo. Inti nyi mkwa fwore dada wa abra minyi me chiti mu. Because ebi ame no mi mfo wechiru. Inti she, awara pano, onye de iye Muslim and iye Christian. Unbelievers can also have very good relationships. So for us, there is equity. There are certain unbelievers, they have agreed that they have open marriages. You go I go. You go, I go. I work 40 years. I don't know why I'm going to do that. 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 I'm going to enjoy. I'm going to say, I'm going to do that. 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 60 years. No, I work. Baby, I'm a summer band. I'm going to do inequity. It's a C. It's a C. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do school fees. I also go to your school fees. Now, I find Chan. This is how I feel that we're in him. Oh, no, no. I'll tell you what I'm saying. I'm on your side because you have not made Tracy watch you. Oh, baby, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? 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 That is the first sign of ownership. Have you seen anybody go and name something that is not theirs? If you make a number car, you can't try Mr. One. As what car number? You can't. The car is not yours. If you make a number, you can't try Mr. One. 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 So when you name, Adam introduced that. He named the woman. It is a sign of ownership. So when you name the dog, you haven't named her. You don't even want anybody to know that you are sleeping with her. Or your side check, Papa. Or your side check, Ata. Yeah, that's it. Um, so we've taken other people to have questions to ask. So let's take all the others. Um, I'm asking this question because of um, uh, the, the number of divorces in the Christian and Muslim marriages and in connection with sex. Um, yeah, 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 to think from class, my sex ni looky say yeah. At the bonia to the point that yeah, na yeah, yeah, to na nyami ma channel. Expressing yourself even to your husband in a way, whether you are satisfied or not. Uh, uh, and so I, I want, I want you to uh, talk more about uh, sex and marriage, and then how keeping. 
our sexual satisfaction to ourselves is affecting marriages, both Christian, Muslims, and uh, the traditional. Please, uh, do we have any other question in relation with this? In this area, so that we can address it once and for all. Because Related to this, or a different thing? Okay. Okay. It just happens that, you see, a lot of the men, they know the women they play with and the women they marry. Moboa. When you mean siya fa wo fa wano on kwanjan, na mbe siya fa wanyo unko fiye. And most of the time, unfortunately, the women they enjoy are the ones they find at the wayside. But they don't think that those women are, 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 are good enough to raise their children. Have their children, raise their children and keep them at home. Because they're also protecting their interests, right? They are afraid. This girl, if I take her home, because they, she, they themselves, they've seen. So they come for the good girls, put them in the house, and then go for the side chicks and play with them at the streets. So for you as a woman, now that you've heard this thing that I have told you, you have to be deliberate, intentional, just the same way you learn how to take care of your child. You will Google it, you will read it, you will search it. You have to do the same thing with intimacy with your husband. Because it is only when you're able to pleasure him that he will be addicted to you. And every other person will be substandard. So it is you being transformed by the renewal of your own mind and telling yourself that you have the right to this man. But sometimes there are hindrances, especially when there's cheating in the marriage. When there's cheating in the marriage, then it introduces insecurity. Because you are telling yourself, if I am vulnerable to this person, is he going to reveal what I do with him to other people? Is he measuring me up with other people? Then you start thinking things that you are not supposed to even be thinking during that act. Because sex starts from the brain. Every sex act starts from the brain. That is why when a man is in trouble, he will never have an erection. Because And it's the same with women. You will never be pleasured if, if your mind is not where it's supposed to be. So you will have to work on yourself. And if you have a loving husband, he has to nurture you. He has to nurture you, help you come out of your insecurity. But because they have an easy fix, which is an already spoiled girl by the side, they don't take their time to help their wives. And that is why such forums are important for the to-be husbands and for the to-be wives. Keep yourself so that your, your wife or your husband is not in competition with any previous flame. There is no way two people can be the same. If you don't know what anybody will do, and I don't know what anybody will do, then we can learn together. It is even easier to be pleasured because you don't have any uh, marking uh, scheme. But you have a marking scheme. You have draw out what do, and we are measuring people by it. Please, are you okay? Thank you very much for the insightful presentation. I am grateful to God to be part of this program today. I have learned a lot, and I pray he will give me the wisdom to impart it to my two daughters. But the way forward, how do we get this into schools? Because you mentioned eight years. That means we need to preach it before they even get to upper classes. So what can you do, or what are we all doing to get to preach this to the little girls before they grow up? I have also been thinking about this. And I tell people that some of the things I say, they are prophetic. This message is just a prophetic word. 
I, I am still learning about it. Every time I speak about it, I get new revelation. Because it's not something that I have studied. My discipline is hospitality and tourism. It has nothing to do with counseling or uh, psychology or anything. But it's a revelation, a revelation. It just comes into my mind. And as I keep getting this revelation, I still keep thinking how I'm going to tell people. And that's why I'm happy that I have this opportunity to speak to you, one group at a time. But all of us now here, I am praying that we will all understand what I am saying through continuous meditation on it. Think about it. If you think about it, you will get even more insights about what I am talking about. If everyone here shares it with three people, look at the number of people we will reach. If the three people also share it with other three people, Look at how the impact we will be making. And as we are doing that, of course, there's SU, there's Gathers, and I keep giving talks. But my prayer is that the people that I teach will understand and will appropriate it. Because some people, I know that I don't have everybody. I know there are people here who have closed their minds to what I am saying. Because if they accept it, <laughs> things will knock things. They, they can't hear me. Where's the soon when I saw they can't hear me because something that is happening with them at that moment, if they start thinking the way I want them to think, I'm not talking about those people. I am praying if I have even 10 people, 10 people pass it to three people, 30 people, 30 people pass it to another three people, 90 people. 